Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Tamara Horwich. I'm a cardiologist here at the UCLA Medical Center. I am the Medical Director of Cardiac Rehabilitation at UCLA, which includes the Dr. Dean Ornish Lifestyle Prevention Program for treating heart disease. I am also a co-director of the UCLA Women's Cardiovascular Center. And today we will be discussing with our special guest, Dr. Ornish, this intensive cardiac rehabilitation program. Dr. Dean Ornish is the founder and president of the nonprofit Preventive Medicine Research Institute, and he is a clinical professor of medicine at UC San Francisco as well as UC San Diego. Dr. Ornish earned a BA from the University of Texas at Austin, where he graduated summa cum laude and gave the baccalaureate address. He then completed medical school at Baylor University and went on to train in internal medicine at Harvard University and Massachusetts General Hospital. Dr. Ornish has multiple honors, and I don't want to get these wrong. He is one of the 125 most extraordinary University of Texas alumni in the past 125 years. He was chosen by Life Magazine as one of the 50 most influential members of his generation and recognized by Forbes Magazine of one of the world's seven most powerful teachers. Lastly, I just found out that in 1996, Steve Jobs recommended by letter to then President Bill Clinton that Dr. Ornish be Surgeon General. So I would like to start out and ask you. By the way, that just was announced yesterday. I had no idea. I <laughs> Steve never shared that with me. I know, so interesting. I would like to ask you, please, sh to share with us the research and science behind your program. Thank you. Well, first let me say how, how happy I am to be here. What a great job you and your colleagues are doing. Thank you. Putting our reversing heart disease program in action. It was one of the first sites that we've had it in. And it's working. It's working here and it's working around the country. Uh, we're really creating a new paradigm of healthcare. And what we're finding over the last 40 years of research is that the simple choices that we make in our lives each day, what we eat, how we respond to stress, how much exercise we get, and perhaps most important, how much love and support we have, that our bodies have a remarkable capacity to begin healing, and much more quickly than we had once thought, when we work on the lifestyle level. What's now emerging is a field called lifestyle medicine, which is using lifestyle changes not only to help prevent disease, but often to reverse it. Sometimes with drugs and surgery, sometimes as an alternative to them, at a fraction of the cost, and the only side effects are good ones. So we've been using very high-tech, expensive, state-of-the-art scientific measures to prove how powerful these very simple and low-tech and low-cost interventions can be. We started with heart disease 40 years ago, and in a series of randomized trials with increasing rigor, we found that in most cases, we could actually reverse the progression of heart disease. Within a few weeks, the blood flow to the heart improves. The heart begins to pump more normally. Most people who have angina or chest pain become essentially pain-free in just a few weeks for someone who can't you know, walk across the street without getting pain or make love with their spouse or play with their kids or work. And within a few weeks, they can do all of those things. It's an extraordinary transformation. And we found they didn't only felt better, but they are better in ways we can measure. Their blood flow improves, their heart's beating more normally. And after a year, even the severely clogged arteries become measurably less clogged and even more re reversal after five years and after one year, whereas the randomized control group who are making more moderate changes tend to get worse and worse. And using cardiac uh, PET scans to measure blood flow, we found there was a 400% or fourfold improvement in blood flow uh, compared to the randomized control group. So these are not small differences. And then in a series of studies, and in the, the first randomized trial with the uh, chair of urology at UCSF and the chair of urology at the time at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, we found that these same lifestyle changes, a whole foods plant-based diet that's naturally low both in refined carbs and fat, it's basically a, 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 a plant-based diet, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, soy products, and so on. Moderate exercise, like walking a half an hour a day. Uh, various stress management techniques, including meditation and gentle yoga. And what we call social support, or love and intimacy, or reduced even further to eat well, move more, stress less, and love more, that these same changes that could reverse heart disease could also slow, stop, and even reverse the progression of men with early stage prostate cancer, and by extension, women with breast cancer. We found that these same lifestyle changes could reverse type 2 diabetes, could reverse high blood pressure, could reverse uh, high cholesterol levels. 
you know, so often when people get, you know, when your patients get put on medications, most doctors, I know you're different, and they say, how long do I have to take these? What does the doctor usually say? Indefinitely. That's the right. Your life. <laughs> and it's like, uh, sometimes I show a cartoon of doctors busily mopping up the floor around a sink that's overflowing, mm -hmm. like, how long do I have to mop up the floor? Like, forever. Well, why don't we just turn off the faucet? And what we're finding is that the faucet, the cause, are really these lifestyle choices that we make, for the most part. And that when we turn off the faucet, when we change our lifestyle in the ways we're talking about, that our bodies often have this remarkable capacity to begin healing, and much more quickly than we had once realized. And so even, again, we always defer decisions on medications and so on to the referring doctor. But in most cases, they are able to, and even sometimes they have to, cut back or even uh, eliminate many of these medications because their blood pressures get too low otherwise, and they start to have side effects from that. And so that's very empowering for people to realize that they, under their doctor's care, can often reduce or even get off of many, if not all, of these medications. They can avoid a, a stent or a bypass and so on. If they have prostate cancer, they can slow and reverse the process. We found that the more diseases we look at and the more underlying biological mechanisms we study, the more reasons we have to explain why these changes are so powerful and how quickly they can occur. So we found, for example, when you change your lifestyle, it changes your genes, you know, turning on the good genes, turning off the bad genes, over 500 genes in just three months. We did a study where we found that telomeres, the ends of our chromosomes that control cellular aging, uh, begin to improve, in a sense, reversing aging at a cellular level, which is a study we did with Dr. Elizabeth Blackburn, who got the Nobel Prize for her pioneering work in this area. So we're about to study, publish a study showing that angiogenesis is downregulated in terms of uh, reducing blood flow to, to tumors. So again, the more things we study, the more reasons we have to explain why it's the right idea at the right time. Yes, the research is certainly fascinating and will only continue to grow and be able to treat new diseases. Right now, I, we are so lucky to have this Ornish Intensive Lifestyle Program at UCLA, and one of the reasons we're able to offer it to our patients is because Medicare has approved the program <coughs> and That's reimburses right. for the program, and thus subsequently uh, commercial insurance has also pays for the program. Yeah. So tell me, how did you achieve this? I know you played a, a large role, and I, I want to know how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, I'm sure. You know, when I started doing this work, I thought if we just did good science, that will be enough, and uh, it turns <laughs> out it wasn't, that if it's not reimbursable, it's not sustainable. It was the painful lesson we learned. So um, it took us 16 years to achieve that. We had the support of Bill Clinton when he was president. He's been on uh, uh, my diet and lifestyle program for, for many years, and, and the most intensive version of it for the last nine years since his bypass is clogged up. He's now uh, following the reversal diet that you're offering at UCLA, and it's working, and not just the diet, but the whole program. Um, and also Newt Gingrich, when he was Speaker of the House, was very supportive. Uh, and we had 20 members of the Senate, 30 members of the House, bipartisan. heads of all the... It was very bipartisan. <laughs> in this increasingly polarized environment, it was really gratifying to bring people together in this way. Mm -hmm. Even then, it took 16 years, although when I talk to people in government, they go, only 16 years? You know, so I guess it's, it's all uh, relative. But when you change reimbursement, it changes medical practice and even medical education. And as you indicated, now that Medicare is paying for it, most of the major insurance companies are as well. So people can come to our program at UCLA, and chances are, if they have heart disease, uh, it'll be covered by one of the major insurance companies. And for those who don't live uh, in, around UCLA or live in other states, we'll be offering a 12-day immersion retreat the last week in January and the first week in February. And the 12 days will also be covered by Medicare and by many insurance companies. And so if you're interested in that, just go to Ornish.com and it's all there. Can you tell us m more, how can the Ornish program, which involves these four components, actually treat and reverse heart disease? You know, it's such an interesting question because um, in general, our bodies have a remarkable capacity in, in most cases mm -hmm. to begin healing if we simply stop doing what's causing the problem. And, and uh, related to your question is, you know, with all this talk about personalized medicine, I mean, if you're talking about treating a, a, you know, a pancreatic tumor with a special immunotherapy, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But for most of these things, it wasn't like there was one set of diet and lifestyle recommendations for reversing heart disease, a different one for diabetes or prostate cancer or, uh, you know, your genes or your telomeres or your blood pressure or your cholesterol. It was the same for all of them. And I think that the reason is, is that although we tend to like silo these different diseases as being somehow different from each other, in many ways, they, they, they have a lot of similar, they share similar underlying biological mechanisms. Things like chronic inflammation, uh, apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. We talked about telomeres, angiogenesis, um, uh, stasis. You know, the more diseases we look at and the more biological mechanisms we study, we realize that all of them are directly affected by these simple diet and lifestyle changes. And so, 
one of the ways that it works is that we're really treating the underlying cause, and then people's bodies can begin to heal, and much more quickly than we had once realized in most cases. Patients often ask me, um, well, what's like really the best diet? You know, there's all these different diets out there. And I often say, well, look, don't get caught up in the detail. Really, the basis of like almost any healthy living diet is whole foods, like plant-based, vegetables, fruits. So, yes, exactly. you know, not to get caught up in the details <coughs> or the names of the diet. Do you agree with that? Well, I, yeah. I do think that I agree that a whole yeah. foods plant-based diet is, yeah. is the healthiest way to eat it, not only for heart disease, but for all of these different mm -hmm. conditions. Um, and uh, it's low in the things that cause diseases, and it's high in the things that are actually protective. There are literally hundreds of thousands of, of healing protective substances like phytochemicals and bioflavonoids, carotenoids, retinols, isoflavones, genesine, lycopene, a whole alphabet soup of these things that have anti-cancer, anti-heart disease, and anti-aging properties. And where do you find them? You find them predominantly fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and soy products. Now, I debated Dr. Atkins, you know, many times before he died. It turns out he died of heart disease. Mm -hmm. um, but it's worth pointing out that the only diet that's actually been scientifically proven to reverse heart disease is a whole foods plant-based diet like what we're talking about. And so I think it's important for people to know that. Now, where Dr. Atkins and the paleo and the latest iterations of this are correct is that Americans do eat too much refined carbs, too much sugar and white flour and things like that. Mm -hmm. But so we've, we agreed to reduce that. We've always done that in the 40 years of our program. It's what you substitute with that. Mm -hmm. If you substitute that with pork rinds and bacon and sausage, that's not a good idea. It's not, I mean, I'd love to be able to tell you that those are health foods, but they're not. If you substitute the bad carbs with good carbs, you know, fruits and vegetables and whole grains, then it, it, it's optimal. And there are other reasons for eating this way, too. What's good for you is good for the planet. You know, what's personally sustainable is globally sustainable. You know, more global warming is caused by livestock consumption than all forms of transportation combined. And also, if we want to talk about feeding the hungry, you know, there's enough food today to feed everyone. No one need go hungry. But it takes 10 to 14 times more resources to do a pound of plant-based protein, I mean of meat-based protein, than plant-based protein. Oh. So maybe you're not ready to, you know, be a vegan or a vegetarian, but if you just move in that direction, the more you change, the more you improve at any age. And maybe just have a meatless Monday. Say, you know, I'm just not going to have a burger today because it's going to make it that much more resources for other people to eat. And it's better for the planet and better for the animals and so on. So from whatever perspective you look at it, and this is really the right thing to do. Yes, certainly given the record highs in temperature we've had in Los Angeles over the last exactly. couple of days, I would Hurricanes, support everyone fires in San Francisco, yeah, who eating knows. a, a plant-based diet. But I want to ask you a question which um, our participants at UCLA often ask. And they say, can you tell me like, what's happening in my arteries when I'm doing the program? And how will I know it's helping me? Yes. What's happening in your arteries is that um, the blockages that keep the blood from flowing through become less clogged over time. Mm -hmm. There are white blood cells called macrophages that are like Pac-Man that kind of nibble the lining of the arteries. There's things, uh, endothelial derived growth factor, things that cause the arteries to dilate. You have new blood vessels that grow around blocked arteries called collaterals, or like your body building its own bypasses in there. And so the, you know, there are a, a variety of mechanisms that mm -hmm. can work very quickly, usually within days. I'm sure, don't you find that within days to weeks, most of the patients that you work with feel dramatically better? They, they do start feeling better, yes. I mean, remember Some just a few weeks ago we, we were together and we got, one of the patients who went through the program was a doctor yes. um, who was told he needed a heart transplant. And he said, well, I'm waiting for a donor during these nine weeks. I'll, let me go through this program. I'll be better in shape for the heart transplant. Mm -hmm. He was told, get his affairs in order. His ejection fraction was like 11%. He could, his son would, had to carry him up the stairs. you remember that? Yes, yes. That yeah. was a phenomenal story. Well, tell yes. me about that. What was your experience with that? And how did that feel as a doctor mm -hmm. being able to, to do that? Yes, absolutely. To be able to go, you know, someone going from needing to like, open up their chest and have a new organ and be on immunosuppressors the rest of their life, thinking about that, and then changing to thinking about, okay, how am I going to have, you know, a vegan meal and, you know, get in my stress reduction. It, it's, it's, un, it's unbelievable. I, um, one of my first patients uh, when we had the Ornish program was a man who was having terrible angina and had a brother who had had like bypass surgery and stents and he couldn't stand to see his brother go through it. He didn't want to come into the doctor. Um, and he refused to have any procedures. And so I said, well, you got to do the Ornish program then. And he happily joined and is feeling wonderful this day. You know, he had angina on his way to work every day. He would walk. I mean, he was brilliant. Now he's able to walk to work without angina yeah. and um, 
feeling wonderful. Yeah, I mean, the guy who had the heart transplant, who was supposed to have the heart transplant, it's like, what's the more radical intervention here? To have a heart <laughs> transplant at a million and a half dollars in immunosuppressive right. treatment or eat well, move more, stress less, love more. Yeah. And, you know, he's now practicing full time. He has no angina. He's hiking at 7,000 feet. I mean, for, right. for, as a physician who's actually providing and overseeing our program, what's that just feel like for you? Right. Well, I, there's, couple things. First of all, there's that old, old joke, like you can either go on a diet or have bypass surgery. And they say like, oh, you better go do bypass surgery because diet isn't covered by my insurance. But now, now thank you. So that's, <laughs> that's one great thing. And the other um, wonderful thing is I, I can tell patients, look, you can start this program and it's not like we're taking away everything from you so you, you won't enjoy life anymore. There's no use worth living. You know, that's kind of the old, yes. you know, the old practice. Um, or the old thoughts about you know going on a diet. Am now I, it's like you're I, actually going to go into this program. You're going to change your lifestyle, but you're going to feel better. You're going to engage more in life, and yes. um, that's really the beauty. <laughs> well, that's the idea: is that what you gain is so much more than what you give up. There's no point in giving up something that you enjoy unless you get something back that's better. And most people find they feel so much better so quickly. It really reframes the reason for making these changes from fear of dying or fear of something bad happening years down the road to I feel better. I think more clearly. I have more energy. I my sexual function is better, my engine has gone away, uh, I, I can do all the things I couldn't do before. And for many people, those are, as you say, they're, it's not about fear of dying, it's about joy of living. Mm -hmm. um, and, and by the way, the other thing is that I think that after doing this work for 40 years, there's a convergence of forces that I think finally make this oh, the right okay. idea at the right time. You know, at the one hand, the limitations of drugs and surgery are becoming increasingly well documented. Study randomized trials have shown, for example, that uh, stents and angioplasties in stable patients don't work nearly as well as people once thought. If you're in the middle of having a heart attack, they can be life-saving, but most people who have them are not, uh, whereas we can reverse it through changing diet and lifestyle. A major study came out in the New England Journal of Medicine last year that after 10 years, men who had early prostate cancer, who had surgery or radiation, didn't lo live any longer than those who did nothing. And yet most guys don't want to do nothing, so if they change lifestyle and go on our program, they may be able to stop or reverse it without the horrible side effects of impotence or incontinence or both. And in the case of diabetes, which is now diabetes and prediabetes, as you know, are affecting half the population mm -hmm. at a cost of over $320 billion just in the U.S. last year. Getting your blood sugar down with drugs doesn't prevent the premature death and the horrible complications of diabetes, you know, blindness and amputations and horrible things like that, nearly as well as getting it down with lifestyle. So I think that, you know, our time has finally come. And I think there's a growing awareness that these are the things that really work as well or better at a fraction of the cost, and the only side effects are good ones. And now people can come to uh, your program at UCLA, in most cases have it covered by Medicare or insurance, mm -hmm. get the support and the information and, and you know, the, it, it's fun, most people describe. And then even mm -hmm. after the program's over, people stay connected with video conferencing and so on right. by forming these really powerful, uh, meaningful communities that really make it fun uh, and, and sustainable. Right, and I want to tell our listeners about our program at UCLA and how it works, just to give you a sense. Of, um, we have, uh, the program is two days a week for participants and it runs nine weeks. Um, they come, you come for four hours at a time from about 5.30 to 9.30, or maybe 5.15 to 9.15 um, on a Monday and Wednesday or a Tuesday and Thursday. And the four hours are broken down into the four core components of the Ornish program. Uh, first, there's exercise, aerobic exercise mainly with some stretching and, and weightlifting. Second, there's a talk, usually learning about nutrition or some of the other components. Um, uh, there's an hour of stress management, and you may ask, what is that? Um, it is lovely. It's meditation, deep breathing, um, and gentle yoga. And also there is group support, love and support. That is led by a social worker and it's exclusive, you know, confidential, where participants, patients talk about, you know, how they're adjusting to the program, how they're dealing with their disease, how they're incorporating, you know, maybe possibly their new disease and their new lifestyle into, into their lives. And so as you can tell from this, we, we have, you know, an amazing staff who, who run the program. So, you know, social worker, nurses, and exercise physiologists running the exercise program so that each day uh, the patient, the participant is more challenged. Um, Can I add one thing yes. to that, which is that uh, right now it's just offered in the evenings, but as they're moving into bigger space because there's been such a demand for what we're doing, it'll make it that much more widely available. 
And again, the social support, the, the group support isn't a, a group therapy. It's more just creating a community where people feel safe to connect with each other at a deep level. And it's so meaningful that even after the program's over, people are still meeting once a week uh, by video conferencing. We have people that were in programs literally decades ago that uh, are still meeting together because uh, that intimacy is so meaningful for them. Yes. And another portion, which can be difficult for some people, you know, the new diet, we have a wonderful, you know, registered dietitian who works one-on-one -on -one with each patient. So if they have diabetes or irritable bowel syndrome, you know, we can work with that patient to get on a diet that works for them within, you know, the program. And we don't eliminate as Dr. Ornish, thank you for changing the rules. They can have, so, you know, there's a little bit of coffee allowed, <laughs> a little bit of alcohol, and even a, a little tiny bit of nuts. So, Not so tiny, <laughs> but the idea is that, you know, the old joke, am I going to live longer or is it just going to seem that way? And the answer is you can enjoy food that's delicious and nutritious. And so much of this food is now commercially available that you can just click on Amazon and they'll send it to you. So that makes it really easy. But we also teach how to cook, how to shop, how to find the foods that you already enjoy and modify them so they fit these guidelines. It's really, it's really joyful. And some of you may be wondering, like, you know, who comes to the program? Like, what do I, you know, how do I get into it? And, you know, do, do I qualify or do I need to do it? And I'll just go through um, what, in general, what Medicare or the commercial insurers will pay for. Anybody who has angina, basically that's heart pain due to a blockage of the arteries. Anybody who's had a heart attack or maybe not had a heart attack but had a stent placed for angina or other or reasons. Bypass. Yeah, or yes, any heart surgery, bypass surgery, or valve surgery as well. Um, anyone who's had a heart transplant also qualifies. <laughs> Hopefully, we can prevent that in the first place. Yes, and what's great is I also, you know, I also tell my patients as we discuss these kind of lifestyle changes that this kind of program it's not only good for your heart. You know, it's it's the same that's you know healthy for your brain in terms of prevention of stroke and prevention of Alzheimer's. Yeah, we're and actually we talk, yeah. we're actually just starting a, a randomized trial to see if we can reverse Alzheimer's, which I think we'll be able to show, which I think is especially important since there are no good drugs either for treating it or, or preventing it. So again, it's just another example of how. These simple changes have so many powerful effects in, uh, you know, in so many, such a wide range of diseases, again, because they share a common underlying uh, pathological pathways. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting that um, we have participants who have never meditated in their lives or ever even imagined that they would ever do so, who are fully enjoying the stress management and taking it back into their lives and sharing it with their families and loved ones. And some of the insurance companies are, are now covering it for diabetes without heart disease, or in some mm -hmm. cases even for those who just have two or more risk factors. And I think as we continue to demonstrate and collect data showing how powerful this program is, we're already reaching a tipping point that more and more insurance companies are covering it and they're in expanding more and more the indications for coverage. And of course, people can also just pay out of pocket if they want to come to the program and, and they don't have coverage for it. Yes. Um, I commend you for getting, you know, this program through Medic, you know, through <laughs> Congress for, uh, for heart disease. Of course, I would love it. I mean, it makes sense. Why can't we just fund it for everybody to prevent disease? So hopefully one day we'll be moving in that direction. <laughs> well, one of the other misconceptions is that, uh, it, it, is that people won't do it. And yet, mm -hmm. in every site we've trained around the country, including here at UCLA, uh, 94 people complete an average of 94% of the 72 hours of, of training. And a year later, 85 to 90% of the people are still following it. Now, a lot of doctors think, oh, I can get my patients to take their Lipitor or their drugs, but there's mm -hmm. no way they could change their lifestyle. Or, oh, gosh, you know, I can't get my patients to do regular cardiac rehab. How are they going to do intensive cardiac rehab? And yet, it turns out that half to two-thirds of people who are prescribed statins are not taking them after just four to six months. About 20% of the prescriptions never even get filled. And yet we're getting 85 to 90% adherence to a much more intensive lifestyle change program. How could that be? Well, the, the paradox is that what really motivates people to change their lifestyle in a sustainable way is feeling good. And when you make big changes, you have big benefits, and they occur really quickly. And so for many people, when you know, their chest pain goes away, they can think more clearly, they can feel better, all the things we've been talking about, those are choices worth making, not to prevent something bad happening based on fear down the road, but rather what I gain right away is so much better than what I'm giving up because the, we're learning how dynamic these underlying biological mechanisms are and how quickly people can get better if they make really big changes in their lifestyle. So the paradox is sometimes it's actually easier to make big mm -hmm. changes than small ones because when you make small ones, you don't really get much benefit. But when you make big changes, you feel so much better mm -hmm. so quickly. Interesting. It really reframes the reason for doing it from fear to joy. 
and there are programs like the one we have at UCLA around the country. Is that that's correct? Yeah, we've yes. been tra we're trying to we are creating a new paradigm of healthcare <laughs> rather than sick care, uh, and it's really working. Um, you know, for as we talked about earlier, all these forces are finally converging that after 40 years really make this the right idea at the right time. So we can make better care available for more people at lower costs, and again, the only side effects are good ones. I, I was uh, appointed by President Obama to this White House Advisory Commission on Public Health and Preventive Medicine and Integrative Health. We published our report last month, and there was a big section in there on lifestyle medicine uh, that we wrote. And likewise, The Lancet is going to be um, uh, publishing a, a major uh, moonshot commission uh, on November 1st that has a section on lifestyle medicine uh, right at the front. So I think this has now really become mainstream, which is really exciting. Yes, um, I believe you can even even go through uh, board certification in lifestyle medicine. That's right. I just came from uh, giving a keynote uh, a couple of days ago at the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Over a thousand doctors came from 32 different countries. So, and that number is doubling every year. So we're really it's this is a lifestyle medicine using lifestyle to reverse disease and not just to prevent it. Uh, is, is, is is our time has finally come. And the other thing we're finding is that it really saves a lot of money. Uh, prevention maybe takes a long time to show improvement. Mm -hmm. When you offer lifestyle as a treatment, we found, Mutual of Omaha found, they saved an average of almost $30,000 per patient in the first year. And Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield found mm -hmm. they cut their costs in half in the first year. And by 400% of the 20% of the people that they spent at least $25,000 on in the previous year. It turns out that 5% of Americans account for 80% of their health care costs. And those are the 5% that we work with in your program. Yes, um, heart disease is very prevalent, you know, number one cause of death in and men and women. And the number one expense, And a number one expense for our country in, in a time where we're seeing growing deficits and cries for changing health care. I mean, I think this kind of program is going to be really important yeah. in many fields. Well, we're really grateful <laughs> to you and your amazing staff. We're grateful to UCLA for the opportunity to uh, do this pioneering work here. It puts, again, UCLA on the cutting edge of, of what's most innovative in healthcare today. And I'm really proud to be here and to be a part of it. So thank you for uh, allowing us to, to share this information with you. Thank you. We're so lucky to be able to offer it to our patients here thank at UCLA. You. Do we have some questions? Do we have some questions? Okay. And by the way, thank you for your amazing leadership. <laughs> thank you. Hmm, this, okay. Here, here's one question I find interesting. I have no heart disease. But does this work for athletes who need to perform under competitive pressure? You know, that's a great question because uh, James Cameron, who is, uh, you know, the legendary filmmaker who did Titanic and Avatar, which I think is the leading uh, highest grossing film of all time, and Terminator and so on, uh, became a vegan himself, he and his wife Susie, uh, a few years ago, mainly for environmental reasons initially. And then they felt so much better that um, they're now making a film called Game Changers, which will be out after the first of the year, where they're focusing on vegan athletes who are, you know, the, the elite of the most elite, uh, as a way of kind of countering this pervasive myth that, you know, you need meat to be strong or you don't get enough protein if you're on a plant-based diet. And I've seen some excerpts of it. It's awesome. Uh, and, uh, and I can't wait to see it when it comes out after the first of the year. So I think that'll really have a lot of buzz going along. Oh, with I'm it. looking forward to seeing that too. And we recently increased the amount of protein that is recommended in the Ornish diet as well. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah yes. it's really hard For not to athletes. get enough protein. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it used to be thought you had to combine foods at every meal and so on. It's If you eat a good variety of, of fruits and vegetables, you're going to get plenty of protein. In fact, sometimes you get even more protein, but you don't get the other bad stuff with it. Yeah, wonderful. Here's another interesting question. Lifestyle medicine sounds like a cure-all. Is it a part of medical school curriculum? Anywhere. Well, nothing's a cure-all. <laughs> Nothing works all the time for everybody, not drugs, not surgery, not lifestyle. And I'm, I appreciate the chance to correct that if I gave that wrong impression. But it is amazingly powerful in a wide range of different disease states and with uh, these underlying mechanisms that are shared by these different conditions. And one of the things we found that surprised me was that the more people change, the more they improved at any age. You know, when I started doing this work, I thought the younger patients with less severe disease would do better, but uh, I was wrong. It wasn't how old or how sick they were. The more you change, in general, the more you improve at any age. Um, now, like I said before, if you've got um, pancreatic cancer or melanoma, and they can do a special targeted uh, cell uh, intervention, immuno immunotherapy intervention towards a particular cell type, that's really great. And for someone who's in the middle of a heart attack, drugs and surgery can be life-saving. But for the most common chronic diseases that account for you know, 86% of the $3.2 trillion we spent last year on healthcare, which again is mostly sick care, these lifestyle changes are incredibly powerful, not only in preventing, but even reversing these diseases. 
And when I, I mean, as long as I've been doing this work, like when we talked about the, the doctor that was, went through the program that needed a heart transplant because he had such a massive heart attack, his ejection fraction is down to 11%, which made his, made his heart was barely beating. And now it's, you know, after just nine weeks, it's 30 to 35%, and he can do all these things. I even have to go, wow, what, what kind of program did that? I thought, oh, it's my program. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's sometimes hard even for me to believe that these simple changes can be so powerful and how dramatic people can get better and, and how um, quickly they can occur. But again, nothing works all the time for everyone. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of patients who go through the program yeah. show sub substantial improvements. Yes. Aren't you finding that to be true? Yes, and often there is a multi-pronged approach. Like you know, I say to patients, "Look, we're going. You know, they're they're upset, they're devastated, they're, you know, their heart is weak. And look, we're going to do everything we can for you. We're going to get you on the right medicines. We're going to put you on the right lifestyle. We're going right. we're going to be there every yeah. step of the way and do everything Precisely. we can. And this is." You know, one of the important ways we can. Yeah, proceed. I'm glad you clarified that because yeah. it, it doesn't mean you don't need, especially at the beginning, those medications can be life saving. But as you begin to change your lifestyle and you begin to improve, uh, their doctor may re decide to reduce or even get them off of many, if not all, of these medications. Yes, certainly we don't want blood pressure or blood sugar going too low. But ha do you know about um, this kind of teaching being done in medical schools at all? It is, actually. Uh -huh. And that's also gratifying because, mm -hmm. again, one, one of the things I didn't realize at the time was we. When we work with Medicare to change reimbursement, it not only changes medical practice, but it even changes medical education mm -hmm. uh, because it's a way for, for doctors to make a living doing this. So uh, we've given, I've given grand rounds at a number of medical schools. Mm -hmm. I've given lectures at the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association's annual scientific sessions in a number of cases. Uh, we work with a number of medical students and, and uh, healthcare professionals from all over the country who come and study with us. And as we're training different hospitals and clinics and physician groups, then it's going back up when, when those same physicians then teach at their medical schools, they can now tell really powerful stories. So it's, uh, it's our conspiracy of love, if yeah. you will. Trickle down theory. <laughs> <laughs> Trickle up in this case. <laughs> Great. Is that, are we ready to have more time for more questions, or are we we're, we're done? Thank you, everyone, for joining us. This has been so fun. Thank you, Dr. Ornish, uh, for coming to tomorrow. Los Angeles. Great to see you. And illuminating all this, your research and work for us. Well, Dr. Horwich, <laughs> thank you for all that you and your amazing staff are doing. We're really grateful, and you're, a, you're shining a bright light in the darkness, and uh, it's working. So if you're interested, please contact them. It's an amazing experience, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. Google UCLA Lifestyle Medicine. Dr. Ornish, we have a great new website out, too. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>